Hello everybody, Code Theorem here, and we're going to continue making our mini game here in Roblox Game Development. In today's episode, we're going to actually finally make ourselves at least the beginnings of a map. Now this map is going to be a fairly random map. There won't be any real sides to it, because the mini game I want to make, just so you all know, the first mini game I want to make will be a mini game. Um, where it's really all a free a free for all uh, with any weapon you choose I'm going to use a linked sword you can put anything else you want in but the reason I want to do it this way is because it gives me an opportunity to keep track of how many times somebody kills another person it gives me the ability to spawn them back in and then at the end give the winner uh, his points and spawn everybody back up top from there, hopefully you guys can figure out the rest, such as, how could I put people in teams? Well, I'm just going to tell you guys um, real quick how you could do that. You could either have actual teams um, using the teams in Roblox's engine, or you can make teams yourself by just keeping different users in a list, um, or in two different tables, and keeping track that way. From there, you could keep track of the team kills by having two variables built into your script um, and every time somebody got a point or somebody would get a point by killing somebody else or something you could just take that point and throw it up onto your points um, for the team that they belong to whether that means you check their team color against uh, the actual team's team color or you go to your tables and you search through each team until you find the user um, either way will work just make sure you get to the right team Anyway, um, I know I'm jumping way ahead there. I just wanted to get that out of the air while I was, you know, thinking about it because I forget things a lot uh, while I make these tutorials that I think of earlier and I'm like, hey, I want to I wanna make sure I tell that to people and then I never do. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, basically just copy this base plate here real quick. Copy the base plate, control C, control V. Then we'll lock the legitimate base plate again. Whoa, I can't even tell where we are. There we go. Okay. We're going to name this secondary one floor. And we're going to change it to be grass. Alright, so that grass is typically green. And we'll use the grass texture. We'll also flatten this top surface. There we go. Looks much more like grass now, I would say. <clears throat> Excuse me. So off of this grass, we can now resize it. Uh, 500 by 500 is actually a pretty good size if you want people running around. Um, but the thing is, is running around is typically better for guns and ranged weapons. Weapons that mean you don't have to be right up next to somebody else in order to use. In game modes where you're using just swords or melee weapons or something in close range, you want to make it easier for people to bump into each other, okay? You don't want one person, you don't want there to be like a hundred studs in between everybody. You want them to all be fairly close knit. So, for a game, for a mode like this, I would go with a maximum of 200 by 200. It might look really small right now compared to this gigantic base plate, but trust me, if we took our zombie and we put him up here, and he's the same size as your average player, Let's say you had six to eight players, maybe ten players on this map at once. They'd all be really close together, especially once we add in trees, little hills, things to change the landscape a little bit because you don't want just a plain, uh, plain map like this. So once we do that, it'll be even better. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to just grab any one of these spawn points and we're going to copy it. And we're going, well actually, you know what, sorry. First we should make the hills. Um, so the hills in this, first they should go down to the properties and change the hills uh, form factor, change the form factor to be brick. We don't want them to be a plate, we want them to be fairly substantially, as substantial in size. Um, and we'll just change the size of this guy to be 10 by uh, 8 
don't want these to be perfectly symmetrical. In fact, that's even still too much. It's 10 by 6. All right. So these don't have to be like sword fighting tournament where we have one and then one and then one and one. We can kind of disperse these out among each other a bit randomly, resizing them as we want. Um, just keeping them the same size, okay? So we'll put one there and we'll resize it, resize that. And they don't even all have to be the same width if you don't want them to be. Like this one I'm going to make kind of big. Uh, and now you're going to resize this so that we've got a secondary plate on top of another makes another hill. Now one thing you guys should know is that this isn't going to be the greatest map in the world. All right, It clearly is not when I'm the one making it. So that means there's zero chance of that. And two, um, I'm not really focusing a whole ton on this. I'm not planning it out as much as you probably should. When you're making a map, you should think, hmm, I know what kind of mini game I want to play here. What would be the best way to keep it in the style of my game? Always when you're making the game, keep it in your style of game. And you should also be thinking to yourself, how can I make it to where the players fight and play the way I want them to? How can I make sure players have the same frustrations and the same enjoyments that I want them to? And how can I make sure the map is unique? Those are some of the main things you th should think about when making a map. This is, this is not all that unique, guys. This is just a bunch of grass all piling up on top of each other to make for a rather annoying template. Okay, so don't don't plan on this being like a great thing. All right, I do want. I'd love to see what you guys make though. If you guys make a map that you think you should, that you're proud of, send me it. I'd love to see it. Um, you guys are awesome. You guys are all apparently watching these videos and trying to learn how to do things. So that means you've learned how to do other things most likely, and it also probably means you're better than me at most things. So I'd love to see what you guys come up with. And yeah, I'm being <laughs> rather lazy and I'm just copying and pasting this uh, map. There we go. Anyway, so now we have our map. We've got all of these floor things. We're actually going to go up and we're going to select all of these floors and we're going to group them um, into a model and we're going to call it, guess what, floor. <laughs> uh, things about models, nobody else sees the name of your models. So technically you could give them stupid names like Jabba Lava Ding Dong, but the th reason why you don't want to give them names like Uncooked Bacon or something uh, stupid and not really sense worthy is because you want when you're going back, say you make this game, it becomes a hit and I hope every single one of your games becomes a hit. Say you're making a game, it becomes a hit you kind of let it go and you start on another project it takes you a month and then you decide you know what while that game is gaining its popularity or and then that game your second game actually this is more realistic your second game hits the front page it has its like two three weeks of being popular falls off and then you're like you know that game kind of fell off quicker but my first game it still got a pretty loyal following if i released an update for it maybe it hit the front page again so you go in and you're looking through and you're like, wait, where, what, how do I f change this? What do I do? Where did I put this script? Where did I put this model? And you're looking and you're like, none of this makes sense. That's why you want to make sure you have proper names for your models, your bricks, everything, especially your scripts. You want to make sure everything is named correctly so that you can find it and alter it or update it or even add to it. Um, easily and without having to look through everything to find what it is. There's nothing inherently wrong with um, there's nothing inherently wrong with just making a game and never updating it. There's nothing wrong with making bad names for models. It's just if you plan on updating, if you plan on looking through or if even you have a team of developers that plan on working on the game um, it helps to have proper names. Anyway, we're going to continue on with this. Um, so we have 
we're going to put our spawn points now, and I'm going to put 10 of them through this map. Remember, like I said last time, you want spawn points to be evenly, or as evenly as possible, evenly distributed around your map, and make sure they're kind of hidden, or far enough that they don't get spawn killed at the very beginning, but that they're not so close, or so far that they never find each other, okay? So I'm just, and again, I try to put them towards the edges of my maps. The reason I do this is because if you put them at the edge of your map, it'll drive people inward, okay? And if they're inside fighting, that means you've got a much better chance of them actually running into each other, okay? Or they could even run around the edge. If people are running around the edge, there's spawn points everywhere, and they're definitely going to run into somebody. If they go towards the middle, everybody else is going to go towards the middle, and they're going to run into somebody. So putting them on the edge is a good idea, in my opinion. So we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've. Mm, I don't like having so many over there. We're going to grab this guy and move him. And we're going to place our final one, our tenth one. And this guy is going to be the unlucky guy that actually gets put dead center. Now we're going to go to our former spawn points model, delete all of these extra spawn points we had, and then grab all of these and move these spawn points into the model. And now we're just going to group the floor and the model together, or the floor and the spawn points together. Come up with a name for our map. I'm going to call it um, Grassy Not So... All right, let's just call it Grassy Hills. Okay, I'm, I'm not very original with this. Once you have that, um, just go ahead and, we're actually one more thing. Let's create, in server storage, let's create another model in here. Where's model, there we go. We're going to name this model Maps. Now we're not going to choose our map in this episode. That'll be next episode when we choose our map. Um, for this episode, all we're going to do is we're going to make the grassy hills and we put it in our maps. Next episode, we'll choose the map and we'll do some cool stuff with the map, like loading it and then removing it at the end of the game. Anyway, for the time being, thank you guys for watching. This has been Code Theorem, making you another uh, Roblox game development tutorial. Um, specifically, this tutorial has been on how to make your mini game maps. And I will catch you guys later.